Hello, YouTubers. I've got to comment a few times, people wanting to uh, know how I hooked this little toad up to my bicycle. And I'll go ahead and show it right now. I'm gonna get it unlocked from here real quick. I just went ahead and turned it over real quick. And another neat feature of this, I didn't really realize it, is that you can just flip it upside down wherever you're at, you know, change a tire, mess with your chain. This is a single speed, so there's not a whole lot to mess with, but kind of neat little feature. Accident feature, but uh, here's what I did. Ideally, you know, you could probably use like a real strong sheet of aluminum or a steel plate. The steel is going to start to get heavy, but I just used a piece of scrap wood I found in a dumpster and cut it to that size and just got some bolts and I don't know why there's not washers on those two there. They're supposed to be. Anyways, <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter on that side. As you can see, that's just bolted on there. And this is just your standard aluminum rack. It's got a load limit of 50 pounds. But I exceed that frequently. And I've never had any problems. Sometimes those nuts there will come loose. So you gotta keep an eye on that. And I have a whole little baggie full of extra ones. And I just, it's just real simple. I mean, I'm not any great person with tools and mechanical stuff. And those are just zip ties that I've put holes through the board. And I just run zip ties around the rack. So that whole tote and that wood board is, the only thing holding on there is the zip ties. Two there, two there, two there, two there. Uh, that bag's being held on with zip ties and there's more zip ties holding on over on that side and It's actually actually quite strong and I You could carry I used to carry a little bag of Zip ties with me at all times in case they broke, but they're so they're so depend they're Dependable and reliable that I don't even carry them anymore because they never break <laughs> Let's see two four six 8, 10, 12. I think I've got 12 zip ties holding that on there. But you know, it's not that big of a deal because when it's right side up and you got weight in here, all the weight's pressing down on the rack, anyways. So basically, all them zip ties are doing is just holding it in place, you know, and it does a real good job. And on the inside, you can see where the zip ties are there, 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 there. And I've got two, four, six, eight bolts holding it in. And actually, the washers I used are a little too small because see that, see how that one's ripped out of there? I had uh, my rodeo time video where I found all those, uh, like a dozen George Foreman grills, and I had a full load, and I just tied them on stuff, and I had them hanging off the back. I saw it made it real back heavy, and it actually ripped, ripped that off of there. So normally, I mean, it's just, if that wasn't ripped out like that, this thing would just be just solid, almost as solid as can be. So I just need to use bigger washers is the only deal. And a rig like this will last you a real long time. I used to, uh, for years, I just, I never used a plate down here. I just would use the tote and tie it to my rack or my motorcycle with bungee cords and zip ties. And it, it works really good for a short period of time, but after a while, the uh, holes will start ripping out like that if you don't have uh, some sort of plate with bolts and washers. The, the washers are the main key. The washers stop that rubber or the tote from ripping. And when it comes to totes, these specific models of Rubbermaid totes are just wonderful. I think they've got like a real high uh, rubber content maybe. Those kind right there. Most totes, most totes will get brittle and crack and the handles will rip. And, but these things, they're just wonderful. I, I have seen other Rubbermaid varieties that are just junk. And you know, they're real brittle, just like plastic. But 
this specific model right there they're, they're just they're just wonderful I, I highly re recommend them and you know they got lips <clears throat> that you know bungee cords just i mean it's just natural it's just a wonderful product and that's just, they're so strong anyways <laughs> compared to other totes like this kind they just they make other totes just look like a joke but uh I'm back on my black bike now. I already got my tool bear hooked up to that and stuff. So see the design I had on this one? This is just something I rigged up real quick. Just as kind of a temporary one when I got a flat tire. And uh, it's actually, that will last a long time. See, it's just a piece of rebar. And it's just the same style and design as that one. Except Instead of a wood plate, I just got one single rebar going across. Because on these skinny little racks like this, if you just use the tote, they'll start warping around that rack, and it's not good. So that's just, that just makes it sturdy. And as you can see, I just slapped some bungee cords on there. I'm going to transfer this bucket over to that. Spacers are key because you get a bunch of weight built up in that thing and these get stuck in there and they're almost impossible to pull out so spacers first and these little cylinders I'm messing with here are uh, little oxygen tanks out of oxygen machines Like little uh, medical home home medical device oxygen machines, and as you can see, see how I did that one. Just got the zip ties in there again, and instead of bolts, I just you know I was just making up something real quick, and I just slapped some bungee cords on there real tight, and that's not a bad design. That's, I mean, that'll last a long time, and see how it's getting kind of loose right there. It's kind of flopping around, but if you just took like this bungee is too long. But if you just took like a bungee cord and hooked it down here, see that makes it makes it real stable. See what I mean? So there's just a lot of things you can do, but it's nothing, you know, real technical or nothing. But that that design right there will last you a very, very long time. There's a double tote. The double tote system. There it is. And see the thing is is a lot of people say, you know, tell me to get a trailer or whatever, you know. But see, the thing is about this, you know, it, like, I can, I got two totes here. And I could, you know, fill that up with stuff, you know, to the brim. And then take this tote and see, because that tote's full, and just set it right there on top. And take bungee cords and just go from the lip here to the lip here with a bungee cord and that thing ties on top of there like that and that's actually a considerable amount of storage you, you might not think so looking at it but that's that's a lot <laughs> that's basically the equivalent to the back seat of a vehicle or the trunk of a vehicle a um, car i should say and you might not think so but the thing about it is when the second tote gets full, you know, I can bungee cord stuff on top of that, you know, my big mound of stuff up here and hanging off the side and, you know, and I can wear a backpack and I used to on this bike, you can see, see all those marks on the handlebars. I used to have another basket on front here. So, I mean, <laughs> it's not, you know, you see me on a bicycle and it's not, it's, you know, I don't, I just don't have a problem with carrying stuff that you might think that I would have upon first look, you know, but, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not going to take a bunch of lightweight items of tin and stuff, you know, but anyways, now it's just not a problem I have except, you know, with the exception of, uh, like refrigerators and washers and dryers and stoves and like occasional water heaters 
But see, you know, I'm dumpster diving, and there's just not that many of those that are even out there. You know, and besides those kinds of items, I don't have a problem taking or anything else. You know, except for like a freak situation that, you know, I might run into like once I ran into a aluminum frame tanning bed in a dumpster, you know, and it filled up the entire dumpster. So that's the thing, you know, dumpsters, for the most part, you know, besides the industrial ones, they're just, uh, they're not big enough to hold, you know, big, big giant things, you know. And where I live, uh, there's not really a chest curbside picking scene because I think they give, it's like you can do it once a year, put stuff on the curb or I know in the neighboring town I used to get like uh, I think three three stickers I could put on three three bags a year. That's all I could put on the curb outside of the outside of the you know the normal garbage cans. And so it's just not and you don't know when people are gonna use those things. It's just random, so it's just uh you know, I just without a big trash picking scene, it's just there's just not that many things that that I can't take, you know. But a lot of times I'll try to explain myself and it sounds like I'm dogging people that are scrapping in trucks and vehicles and that's just simply not the case, you know. That's just my specific situation where I live. I don't own a vehicle and there's absolutely no need for me to spend that kind of money because I don't have any other aspect of my life that requires one, you know. You know, if you already own a vehicle, then sure, you know, picking up those big pieces of tin like refrigerators and stuff that's a no-brainer of course you pick that up if you see it on the curb somewhere or next to a dumpster you know but I simply don't want to ever buy a used vehicle I don't want to own a used vehicle and to buy a new truck you know you're looking at four hundred dollars or so for a nice new truck monthly payments and at least a hundred bucks a month for insurance and you know if you're driving around looking for scrap you're spending yeah, at least a minimum of three hundred dollars on gas you know not to mention oil changes and new tires and maintenance and so you know you're averaging maybe eight hundred dollars a month and why would I why would I spend eight hundred dollars a month to go pick up the occasional five dollar stove or washer or dryer you know the eight or nine dollar refrigerator or whatever you know what i mean why, why would i do that <laughs> but that's my situation you know other people are in different situations and it fits them to do that type of stuff and that's that's wonderful i'm not saying anything bad about that kind of stuff because obviously if you want to pick up truck and you have access to large amounts of tin, you can make a fortune. Don't don't get me wrong. I don't, I'm just saying for me personally, in, in my situation where I live, it's just the scene's just not happening. Yeah. Maybe one day I will have to have a truck or a car for one reason or the other, you know. But that day ain't today, I can tell you that much. And the thing is, is I, I live directly across the street from a U-Haul. I could just go rent a truck at any time if I wanted to, you know. It's uh, $19.99 a day to rent a pickup truck uh, plus gas and some sort of mileage. I think I, I calculated it once and if I found something extremely valuable and big, 
it would cost me you know, 50 bucks to get it and take it to the scrapyard and do some dumpster diving and stuff on the way back or whatever, you know. I, I calculated it, about $50. So it's not like I'm totally helpless if I found, you know, 700 pounds of copper somewhere. I, I would get it. I mean, don't, don't think I wouldn't. <laughs> All right, I'm loaded up ready to have it run down to a scrapyard. And here's what I was talking about because my that one washer was stripped out there and until I get a bigger washer and fix it I just strap it on there with the bungee cord it's just a solid it's not going nowhere that bike that bike will flip backwards before that tote moves a couple inches so and I saw on boardsort.com this uh, silver plated brass is like two dollars and fifty cents so that's that's a nice price that's about two pounds right there and so all that silver plate you see on that piece of brass is worth about two dollars that's about two dollars worth of silver plate so you can imagine when people start talking about you know getting the I mean that's gold right there but like little tiny pieces of silver plate imagine how much you'd have to do to get that much but anyways <laughs> there are variables which allow me to do it on a bicycle which many of you simply may not be able to do or not be able to do but a bike trail such as this a lot of you might just not have that where you live I mean <laughs> this is one aspect of my specific uh, what do you want to call it geographic location that allows me to do this and it's not a bad ride I mean, you know who can argue with that <laughs> But this bike trail is just, it takes me directly to a scrapyard. So it's just an enormous benefit that many people don't have, I'm sure, in the United States. And so, I mean, it just goes into, I, I totally understand why people don't understand how I can do it on a bicycle. But, Here's one reason right here. I think this bike trail is close to 40 miles long and it's got branches. They're starting to pop up all over the place. So it's, it's quite the deal. It's no, it's no uh, joke bike trail. It's, it's a real deal bike trail. Whatever a real deal bike trail is, that's what it is. So like the scrapyard I'm going to right now, if I jumped in a vehicle and took the streets, and I could get there in 20 minutes. And by bicycle, once your legs are at least fairly conditioned to doing it, I can get there in 50 minutes, 45 minutes if I won't really want to. But you know, once I'm down at the scrapyard, I can just continue to dumpster dive in that area. And just go back to the scrapyard multiple times. And then when I go home, I can just work my way back home, dumpster diving, just picking up more stuff. So very, very little wasted movement whatsoever. Virtually nothing, really. <laughs>